When you know that you are queer, but your favorite drink is beer, that's gayish. You can bottom without stopping, but you can't stand going shopping, that's gayish. Oh, gayish, you're probably gayish. Well, life's just too short for narrow stereotypes, so oh, it's gayish. We're also gayish. It's gayish with Mike and Kyle. Hello, everyone in the podcast universe. This is Gayish, the podcast that hates unreliable guys with bleach blonde hair. You know, frosted flakes. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much because it's true. Thanks. I sometimes when I'm laying in bed, I'm like, the podcast that this. <laughs> and I, and that was one. I'm Mike Johnson. I'm Kyle Getz, and we're here to bridge the gap between sexuality and actuality. And today, hey Kyle, hey Mike. Remind me what we're going to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, let me think. <laughs> oh, it's like motorboating for your butt. Yes. Uh, I mean, it could be. Anyway, we're talking about rimming. We're talking about rimming. Analingus. Analingus. The lingual of the anal. Yeah. Yeah. It's like pretending your tongue is a dick. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, okay, <laughs> a couple things up front first. But first. Oh, but first. Okay. Uh, Patreon members, I want to thank... Okay. Um, Thank them. Uh, yeah, here you go. Uh, <laughs> Tyler Webster. Tyler Webster of yeah. the Dictionary Family? No, of Charlotte. Oh. Charlotte's yeah. Webster. Yeah. Um, Steve Dupree. You, me, Stephen Dupree. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> Steve Buchanan. James Buchanan, the president's great, great, great grandson, so he's probably also a faggot. <gasps> Yay. Hi, Steve. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, so thank you all We appreciate you Thank you for being people that pay us money Thank you for being <laughs> a money giver um, Also That's Just great. up top yeah. I wanted to make a correction No no. I'm going to make a correction well, I'm going to make a correction Okay you can go Are you going to correct it, the same it, thing It's a bit Hermione Yeah well Kay. I was the one that fucked it up then, So then, I'm going to correct you're right. it You're right It only makes sense that you clean up your own shit Yeah <laughs> rimming um okay uh yeah i said hermione was uh half blood but she is not she is muggle born she's full-blooded shitbag muggle- <laughs> she's regular old boring human except a wizard i mean okay that not true i'm gonna m- get it even wronger after i she is muggle born i'm just gonna stick to that is what she is muggle born uh the most famous half blood is voldemort um but Aww. so he was like He's kind of like Hitler in the way of like hated half bloods and muggle born people, even though he himself was half blood. You know, he looks like um, like he had some sort of bad plastic surgery. Like he's the the Meg Ryan of villains. <laughs> 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 what happened to his face? Yeah, it's like Tara Reid got caught on fire or something. <laughs> and the, um, oh, and then one other thing I wanted to mention. Okay, before we get to the news. Great. You're making a face that says I'm not going to like this. Oh, no, no, no. You'll oh, be fine. Okay. Um, did, I know, Mike, you and I talked about it. Dan, did you hear in Discord the um, the uh, Marat posted a slowed down version of Mike and I talking? <laughs> I do hear that, yeah. I was <laughs> kind of high while listening to this, and it was <laughs> so funny. I He picked the perfect clip. I'm actually going to play it here. Ooh, Harry potter <laughs> It's a really good poll to come up with a fake, uh, oh yeah, we're talking about Harry Potter. We're gonna talk about Harry Potter. Um, think, what? what? Yeah, cause you're, you're gonna say the thing. I just, I love it so much. Thanks for making that, Marat. And if you want to hear that, oh no, I just played it. But also join the Discord. Cause and lots you get of people... to hear his voice in it too. Yeah. Never oh yeah. Marat's voice. Yeah. It's adorable. Yeah. Um, and then somebody else in the Discord said that they usually listen to the show on double speed, so when he hears us at normal speed, we sound drunk to him. Oh, God. <laughs> what do we talk really fast? So that when he hears it, it's going to sound even faster, and he's going to be like, oh, my God, I can't deal with this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, suck it. Um, suck it. <laughs> let's find various ways to fuck over our audience. Okay, that's what I have. Discord's great. Hey, oh, yeah, join the Discord. It like keeps growing. It's awesome. Um, nudes. Let's do the nudes. So, <laughs> uh, first of all, just a quick Aaron Salazar update. Ooh. So, on the Facebook page, they posted videos from, I can't decide if it's a wedding or a quinceanera, but uh, he is on the dance floor in a wheelchair, just dancing his ass off. 
and um then there's a, another song where he's he's standing still <laughs> he he doesn't he can't go anywhere but he's standing and and swaying with a family member and everybody's crying and like yeah. it's it's really cool but uh his his progress continues and that it was a bright spot in my week to see that you know like because so much of the news has been depressing yeah. about him and and this was just like a yeah look at him having a grand old time it's yeah. fantastic yeah it, this is not like medical progress it's like but also he's going to his family's functions and dancing it, and that's awesome yeah yep keep on keeping on go aaron aaron salazar dance your ass off unless you want to rim then keep your <laughs> ass on because you'll need that <laughs> uh let's see so the um on sunday bosnians had their first lgbtq pride parade in sarajevo oh. Um, there were several thousand people that marched and they were protected by a major security operation. So there were anti-sniper units. Um, anti-sniper? Yeah. So some conservative Muslim Fuck. groups had organized counter rallies and had threatened violence. And so, but they went forward, they persevered, they got a security detail together and apparently it was actually really cool. That's so brave. I mean, I always feel like I'm a brave human when I go like do something gay or go to like pride but the people that start in any country or city where they they are starting the very first pride and willing to take that risk and that's those people really impress me mm -hmm. they, they're the people that we need and I, I don't think it's me i don't think i'm that brave but the, they're awesome and so important yep absolutely i was where i thought you were going to go with that was like you, you you think you're awesome and brave when you go and do something gay but like it's not like might get shot brave. No, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, that, I guess that, I mean, that's a similar thing. Yeah. I'm like, oh, like there was a shooting at, oh, well, I guess there was a shooting at Pulse, so there could be a shooting. It's the there's United not, States. There's all the fucking shooting. That's true. That's not, that's not news anymore. <sighs> <sighs> Great. Um. So let's see. Uh, DragCon was this week. Oh, yeah. In Seattle. RuPaul's DragCon in New York. Oh, um, there wasn't there a drag something here? There was PAX. Oh, that's for what Labor I'm Day thinking. weekend. What's PAX mean? Penny Arcade Expo. Wow. And wow. Penny Arcades need their own expo. <laughs> Dancing, no. Does, is that not? PAX isn't. Oh, no. That, that's totally what it is. It's just not a. It's not really a Penny Arcade Expo it's anymore. It's a celebration right? of gaming. Oh, yeah. okay. So it's card okay. games and board games and video games and PC games and, and a lot of cosplay and it's. Well, they might need to update their it's name. It's basically Comic Con. Oh, is George Takei there? <laughs> he seems like he's at all those. Okay, sorry, <laughs> you were talking about Drag Con. So it was billed as the world's largest drag convention held at the Jacob K. Javits Convention Center in Manhattan. And Elizabeth Warren made a virtual appearance. She had recorded a message to the conference. And uh, in, I like that, like, people that have appeared in through virtual reality at events is like Prince. Who is the one like look, <laughs> Lil Wayne yeah. and Elizabeth Warren. Like yeah. these people, <laughs> one of these is not like the other. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, so, so she said, quote, I'm in this fight for an America that works for everyone, not just for a thinner and thinner slice at the top, which I thought was maybe going to be fat shaming. But I, that's, not, that's not what she was going with that. Um, she said, I'm in this fight for full LGBTQ plus equality. We've got a lot of work to do to make sure that everyone is free to be who they are and to love who they love. Uh, she also pointed to the ongoing epidemic of violence against transgender people, particularly women of color. Uh, quote, we need to call it out and we need to fight back. Everyone should be able to go to school, to work, to get health care, or just walk down the street without fear of discrimination or violence. Equal means equal, period. That's what I'm fighting for. Uh, she, she also virtually showed up at a math conference <laughs> at the same. She's, so she had to make it work for both. And she was like, equal is equal, everybody. <laughs> There's no way around it. The commutative property of transgenderism no the, the the transitive property the trans property <laughs> come on now that shit's funny yes i think so thank you for out mathing me i really like yeah, that a whole welcome. bunch yeah. elizabeth warren Thanks. i heart you and i don't know if you're gonna be the nominee but doesn't matter 
I'm going to vote for you because I'm not voting for that other fucker. You mean you're going to vote for literally anyone, whoever the fuck it is. Put a toaster on the ballot with a D next to its name. I am voting for Pop-Tarts. That's <laughs> going to happen. They, at one point, we all considers, considered toasters very brave. <laughs> and then, no, I'm too old for brave little toasters. Oh, my God. I watched that so much with one of my friends who I now don't talk to anymore. Oh, did it make you gay? Yes. Because a, a lot of the gays that I know that are your age, oh. Brave Little Toaster's a thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, great. Okay, cool. Uh, last but Is not it least. Is because toasters have two holes? Mike and I are really both reflecting on this together. I don't know what that means. I've never fucked a toaster, if that's what you're asking. Uh, <laughs> Plus, if it only has two holes, it's an old toaster. Most toasters these days have like six holes because... America. Yeah. More more toast. Texas toast. Oh, give me give Texas me more toast. holes. <laughs> Speaking of holes. Last but not oh, least. Oh no, okay. Last but not least. But that was such a good transition. Okay. You I'm um Oh, hmm? wait, not last but but Oh damn. De- neither last nor least. Okay. Um so this is gonna air on Thursday. Yeah. So you know what yesterday was? What? Wednesday. You said you'd never forget, Kyle. Oh, oh, September oh, oh, 11th. The Alamo. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's September 11th this yeah, week, yeah. which makes me happy for some oh, weird wait, reason. What? <laughs> that was really weird. Thank you. Why? I don't know. I just, yeah, 9-11. No, you need to expand on 9-11 makes me happy. You you can't just leave it at that. So ac- for your okay. sake. it doesn't actually make me happy. Here's here's the thing. I'm actually I, so I came to the realization that uh, uh, this year is the 18th anniversary of 9/11, mm-hmm. and I feel like nobody's really talking about it. Like at some point hmm. we stopped talking about it, mm. and that makes me happy. Mm. Like it's been far enough. Away. It's like it's just going to be Wednesday. Death or divorce, or yeah, yeah like it's far way. enough away that you don't. And maybe yeah. that's because Shitbird has taken up all of the fucks that we could possibly give about things. Yeah, but like, yeah, nine yeah, eleven is going to come and go on Wednesday, and I don't know that we're going to care. I mean, we did care recently about uh, when John Stewart was like, "Yo, like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah." Everyone, the, keep, the first like, responders thing. Yeah, g- g- let them keep getting the benefits they need to fucking live like you all are this should be an easy bipartisan agreement that we like it's in the past it happened so it doesn't i don't need to get into it but yeah we cared for a little bit back then yeah ta-da ta-da last but not this this is this is for sure the last okay this is for sure the last one okay okay i'm afraid you're gonna scold me oh okay because yeah okay so today Sarah Palin and Todd Palin announced that they are getting a divorce. Mm. And the reason that's in the news for gayish is because of the gay rumors that have dogged Todd Palin for well, years really... and years and years and years and years and years. I didn't hear that. Yeah. He's supposedly a big old mo. Allegedly. Uh, I mean, in that family, we have no idea who even had the children, much less fathered them, right? Like Really? Yes. Sarah Palin's daughter, like for sure, had a baby. But before oh, that, yeah. for sure had a baby, but they pretended Sarah Palin had the baby. Oh, like, wow. That family is fucked. Wow. And anyway, now he gets to be his gay old self. At least that's what I'm going to guess is going to happen. Okay, so he he's not coming out or anything. Oh, you're saying I'm scolding you for guessing that he's gay. Correct. Oh. For reading into those rumors and mm. giving them credence. Yeah, yeah. We don't We don't know that that's true. He may or may not be, and it doesn't help to try to assign that label to him when he hasn't assigned it to himself. Yeah, but he's kind of gay. <laughs> Great. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of kind of gay. Speaking of. <laughs> uh, oh, that is like a good. Yeah. Okay. Rimming. Should I? What, should I dive in head first? Yeah. Or what? <laughs> what? What do you want to do? Sure. Yeah. Um, do you, well. Yeah. I, wait. Did you? Did you? Did you shower? Before we started this, because <laughs> that's real important out. to me. <laughs> um, uh, like, uh, what brand of soap did you use? Is that like, it's something I was thinking about the other day. I was like, what's the best that... tasting soap? Oh, well, okay. <laughs> One of my friends uh, actually like 
has this coffee flavored douche that you can use and so i guess it tastes like does it wake you up americanos or i don't know i don't know um okay, do caramel you... macchiato douche <laughs> mm, that, would, that sounds great that sounds really delicious oh god um they'll starbucks will soon be delivering coffee flavored take a triple venti douche <laughs> please <laughs> um do you is rimming part of your typical sex I Play. figured that I would have a whole segment oh, okay. on just my... Your ass. Great. Ass. Okay. Well, well, and the asses of others that I have enjoyed. <laughs> <laughs> Your ass or someone's like you. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So then I'm just going to talk about everybody's asses. Um, er, buddy. So there is... I mean, it's interesting. Like you said, speaking of gay things or whatever, uh, there is like a stigma around anything involving a dude's butt that that means it's gay which i mean we've talked about anal sex but this as well yeah i was reading uh an article and i didn't put it in my stuff which is why I, wait that was a triple entendre i think <laughs> I, there's a, there's an article that i didn't put in uh <laughs> where they were talking about how uh butt play is feminizing that like it started with this culture of like that's where the dicks go so it's like a vagina mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. therefore it's feminine mm -hmm. or feminizing to I mean, allow yourself to be pleasured that way yeah like i mean men are used to putting their dicks in things yeah and so to have someone whether it's a dick or a finger or a tongue like putting something into your butt then makes it like I, i'm usually not the receiver of things yeah but it's and it's but it's never the person eating ass like the, the, you can eat all the ass you want and that's fine. Wait, it's, no. It's having you... your ass eaten makes you feminine. Oh, huh. Go ahead. Um, Say your things. Yeah, no. So, I mean, <laughs> part of it is I'm going to talk about as much as I could find about the numbers. Um, but yeah, I, I still straight people just straight, get over Straight yourself. people be fucking. They, they are having way more anal sex than they used to. But, mm -hmm. but dudes. I, I, I do have an article about that. Oh, okay. Um, I'll just talk about my thing then. I'll really stay focused on what I'm about to tell you, which is this. First of all, I'll talk about gay and bi men. Um, so this is from a study from the Netherlands. Okay. So I don't know are Netherlanders uh more or less ass centric. Am I guessing? Well, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I don't know the answer to this. I'm just saying, like, if we think about them compared to us, when I give you the numbers, is that going to be more than the U.S. or that? Like, I would think. Like, they would be, like, more ass-focused, like, more open to sexual things than Americans. So, and so German people do some crazy sex things. Like, that's just, like, Berlin mm -hmm. is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And part of the theory there is that as a society, they're so, like, efficient and repressed that that allows for this sort of underbelly to be really seedy. Mm. I have similar thoughts about the culture of the Netherlands that would lead me to believe that perhaps they are also freaks. They'd be more down? In a good way. Yeah. Well, uh, so this is from A World of Difference, the sexual health of LGBT people in the Netherlands from the 2013 study published by Rutgers. By the way, excellent use of the word Nederlander. I didn't say that. I think you did. Go ahead. Oh, did I? Did I accidentally get something right? Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> um, uh, it's like on a test when you guess C for multiple choice. And, then you, <laughs> and it's true. Okay. Uh, gay men, they did the breakdown between hookups versus stay partners, like how often people rim. Yeah. With a hookup, gay men uh, said they rim 42 or 32% of them said they rim. Okay. Versus with the... Ooh. I just realized, I don't know... Are there people listening that might not know what rim oh, is yeah, yeah. or what we, rim we jobs should, are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mike, go ahead and lay it on us. Analingus, rim jobs, rimming. Eating are, ass. Eating ass. That's putting your to mouth. Wait, eating it, tossing the salad. That's different. Salad tossing. We're going to talk about why that's oh, different. Jesus, wow, I'm, I'm figuring I, out all your topics. Putting your mouth, lips, tongue on somebody's butthole. Or, or in somebody's butthole for sexual gratification purposes. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, gay men, 42% during a hookup and 36% during a steady So not 42% of hookups, 
just correct 42 percent of gay men that hook up said yeah. that rimming is a thing yeah. that happens yeah 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 great which is interesting that it like goes down like once you get into it's like interesting that that's more a thing associated with a hookup than a regular partner like mm. is that like a a sexy hookup thing and then when you're with your regular partner you're like you know eat your own ass i'm busy <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i just had dinner i don't know i don't know i just it's, just it's interesting that it becomes less when you're in a steady yeah partnership yeah 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 do you have any theories on why um no i th- i think you're dead on actually i think that like like because we're talking about buttholes mm-hmm. we're talking about poop and we really yeah. we should like be okay with saying that yeah and yeah, yeah. And that means you likely, I mean, some people are into scat, but I think that that's a pretty small minority of people, but, but like you, you, you want to get all the poop gone, yeah. go away. Yeah. No poop. Yep. And, and, but that takes work, yeah. right? Like bottoming is hard enough to like get clean and ready and prepared and all of that. Like at least me at least I, I take an extra level of care and precaution if i think that i'm going to have my ass eaten oh same like, it makes like it gives me anxiety of like it does not matter how clean i can work on it it's just like what if something happens yeah because yeah. it's like at that point not just a dick it's like they're tasting it mm-hmm. and you know you don't want to you don't want ass surprises that's right um for bisexual men uh, for would you think it'd be more or less than gay men? Oh, that's right, they exist. They're a thing. Okay, um, <laughs> I, I'm going to guess more. Actually, um, incorrect. It oh. is less. Okay. Uh, for hookups, 22 percent uh, of bisexual men said they incorporated, and for with steady partners, this is interesting. It's more. It's higher. 29 percent say it's part of their regular. So gay men they do it less once they're in a relationship. Bi men do it more in a relationship. Okay. I wonder if like. I have a theory. Go. Do you want to hear my theory? Yeah. Lady buttholes have way less hair. Oh, this is specifically these people having sex with men. Oh, then I pass. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I, I wonder if gay men is like kind of a, it's a normal thing in the rotation. It's a normal tool in the sexual tool belt. Whereas with bi men, that might be less so of like, don't, are you into this or not? Or I don't know. Oh, okay. I mean, they, they, they do it less. So it is, you know, less, I don't don't know. And and I wonder like, then when you get into a steady partner, you're like, so your ass, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) how's my mouth feel? Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. can, can we go ahead and get in there? Okay. Then I tried to find information about straight people, Okay, which I couldn't find. Um, that surprises me. We know all the things about straight people. We should. There's a lot of them in the world. <laughs> There's so I yeah. We all of our studies are about fucking straight people. Um but uh in this article in Salon from twenty fifteen by Callie Halloway called Ass is the New Pussy, why Analingus is on the rise. Are you fucking kidding me? I am not fucking kidding you. It's what? this article right here. Yeah. That's on my screen right yeah. now. Wait, yeah, wait. Are you talking about that? No, I just wanted to say the title because I think oh. it's great. <laughs> Ass is the new pussy. <laughs> Ass is the new pussy. Which I mean, that's part of the like that's actually probably speaks to it reinforces why straight men might not do it if ass is the new pussy like hmm. eat, w- eat my pussy out like that's not the straight dudes aren't gonna say that to someone like mm-hmm. it's it's feminizing their ass yeah 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 i mean i, I think I, I think the article is also just speaking to it becomes less taboo uh, things become less taboo and talking about performing oral sex on a woman Performing oral sex on a vagina, mm. but let's yeah a woman it like because we're talking like pre sexual revolution was really taboo, not talked about, not done, not discussed, and then it became okay to talk about, mm. and I like in the sixties I think, and now it's starting to be okay to talk about butt play mm. at least in the straight world. I do remember when vaginas were real big in the sixties. <laughs> At least the bushes were. (laughs) Um, Okay, so what this article did say is that a 2012 Esquire poll of 500 men, not necessarily straight men, but... Spell poll. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Not straight men, but it is representative of the U.S., so mostly straight men, uh, found that 12% secretly wish they were getting more analingus. Receiving or giving? Getting. Receiving. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, like, 
uh, I think it's it's on the rise, and more and more people are like learning about it. And straight people just fucking grow up. Just you're an adult that has a delicious butt. Like let someone <laughs> let someone taste it. Um, and then I couldn't find anything on lesbians, but the Wikipedia article about rimming. Yes, I mean it's called analingus. It's very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> um, but they just said lesbians do it less frequently. <laughs> So I don't know what that means or anything, but they just, I don't know. I mean, I have wondered in general, n- not just rimming, but like any kind of ass play at all. It makes more sense with men to me because of the prostate. Mm. Like there's a happy button in there. <laughs> so it makes more sense to me. And I just keep wondering, like, l- ladies, what are you getting out of that when like you have you have another hole that's built for that? purpose and mm. and I, anyway i and i'm clearly wrong because like women have and enjoy ass play all the time like yeah. that's that's a thing that that happens it just i i had a hard time for a while like making that compute yeah i mean don't do you have like your butt like any part of your body is like sensitive and do, i think your butt has like a bunch of nerve endings in it, it a and, whole like, bunch yeah so uh, like that's all of us and you know i like it when someone like licks my neck like you know although there are a lot of places that feel good when you lick it yep um those are the numbers butts by numbers but by numbers <laughs> one two three it's as easy to learn as anal ease no Mm-mm. okay never mind okay it's murder by numbers yeah. uh, the police no where <laughs> I hurt you. Okay, so uh, the first thing I wanted to talk about is that it's not necessarily the safest thing to do. Oh, okay. Um, I kind of figured you were going to talk about risks. I'm because I'm nervous, Nelly, about everything. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's. I think it's a good discussion to everyone. Should be aware of this. I feel like what I was saying about drugs earlier. Like we should all, just all know the data and know. The, the risks mm-hmm. even if we're all going to do it anyway we should be aware of it this to sum up mm-hmm. poop <laughs> which comes out of there mm-hmm. is a real good way to get sick no matter how it ends up inside of you mm-hmm. you're putting you're putting your mouth where the shit comes out mm-hmm. like there's inherent dangers involved in all of the human pathogens that are excreted through the fecal route and so the fecal oral root. This is the least sexy rimming has ever sounded. I know, but... <laughs> I know, I know. So analingus, this is the Wikipedia article, by the way. Feel free to read the whole thing if you want to. Uh, analingus has potential health risks arising from the oral contact with human feces. Diseases which may be transmitted by contact with feces include bacterial diseases, including shigellosis, which is bacillary dysentery, viral systemic diseases, including hep A, hep B, hep C, poliomyelitis, human papillomavirus, herpes simplex virus, Parasites, including intestinal parasites and infections and inflammations, chlamydia infection, gastroenteritis, conjunctivitis, gonorrhea, lymphogranuloma, venereum, and other sexually transmitted infections. Plus, if you eat somebody's ass and then immediately use your mouth on their genitals, then it can introduce E. coli to the urethra, leading to pretty serious, nasty urinary tract Mm. infections. Isn't part of the, like, you're only talking about the uh, poop part of this, but, like, if there's, like, something going on, like, STI-wise on the butt, like, even if there's no poop, can't you still pass well no, so, so the, the the thing here is like you know when there's an e coli breakout and like some f- fucking person at wendy's didn't wash their hands and now all the lettuce has shit on it mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. you don't see pieces of poop like it's microscopic amounts of human feces can still cause huge problems mm-hmm. and so you you need to be like in order to avoid that completely you got to be real 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 clean but i'm saying like even if you're perfectly clean can't you still pass along things like STIs? Sure. Uh, like if you have gonorrhea of the asshole, like sure, and someone eats it out, they could sure collect that into their mouth. Yes. Okay. It's so like it's, it's there's there's risk beyond like so some, some people might hear like oh there's all these fecal things so you got to clean up real good and then you're good but that's not the case. Oh sure 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 sure. Mike yeah. said him real fast, but he said gonorrhea, chlamydia, herpes. Yeah, but, like... but specifically, you were talking about there are risks if you ingest fecal matter. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. And you listed all that. St- <laughs> I was going to say shit, which all that stuff. <laughs> but 
even if all that there's no fecal matter there, there's still some of those risks. That's the point I want to make. There's a silver lining in this butthole. <laughs> <laughs> is it the prostate? HIV AIDS is not believed to be easily transmitted through analingus. Oh, good. So, so throw away your prep, everybody, <laughs> and just eat ass all day. <laughs> um... Another recent study suggests a correlation between oral sex and throat cancer, hmm. and anal lingus is included in that. It's believed is it, because of the transmission of HPV. Is is rimming considered oral sex? Yeah. What, I guess what? so, but I never, like, I think of oral sex as specifically being, like, blowjob or pussy licking. Yeah. Add the butthole. I guess, yeah, throw that in the mix. <laughs> Like, but where do we, where do we draw the line? Like, is sucking on someone's finger oral sex? No, I did get my toes sucked and that was pretty interesting. Yeah. Mm. I've done that once before. I get, I get similar nerves of like, hold on, let me real quick take a bath. Let me make sure my eagle talons are under control first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to spend about 25 minutes really cleaning up everything before you get in there. But then again, some people don't want you to. So that's something I'm going to mention. Anyway, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah just just safe sex practices include thorough washing of the anal region before analingus to wash away most external fecal particles and reduce the risk of contraction of fecal sourced infection spell contraction contraction Con contra uh, contraction that, yeah i don't know if that was clear is that when you like Use a device to pull your Ye vagina? <laughs> I think, add some contraction? No, I think <laughs> it's like if you put in little mini speed bumps on your labia so you can, <laughs> so you can really get some contraction. So, so when it snows, you don't fall down? <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> Slippery when wet. You, gotta, you, you need some... Okay. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. Um, an enema can also reduce the risk of direct fecal contact. A dental dam may also be used, which nobody does, but it's an option. It, yeah, I was thinking about this because this is something that came up. And like with the, with a blowjob, it seems like I'm not going to do it. You should, you should blah, blah, blah. But with like with asking, that might be like, a, I don't know. I feel like I'd be more. I'm not probably not going to realistically, but I feel like I'd be more, a little bit more likely to. Mm -hmm. No, that's a lie. Never mind. <laughs> Keep going. I just <laughs> also. Avoid unprotected sex, which involves fellatio after anal. Mm. And ass to mouth is all over gay porn. And I get it. It's like, I understand the appeal, but that's actually a, a pretty risky behavior in terms of potential for health problems. Mm. Probably don't do it unless, I don't know. Just, how about this? How about this? Do it if you want to. Just be aware that there is an increased risk there. Yeah. That it's not just a benign thing. Can you like clean out your mouth in between? Is well, so um, this is particularly, uh, I, I think, also worried about like when you get fucked and then mm. turn around and blow the guy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. happens in porn a lot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Which I'm too much of a germaphobe. I'm like, ew, change the channel. But I understand that like, because I see so much of it in gay porn, it must be a thing that people are into. Okay, so, there are two like, things that really frustrate me. Okay, great. If we're having, well, not we, in porn, when they're having, I mean, no, you might, no yeah, me too. I mean, never mind. Okay, when <laughs> porn, when they're having unprotected sex and, you know, they have to pull out so that everyone can be like, oh, look, I can see your cum, so you definitely did cum. When they don't stick it back in, I'm like, what's the point? now <laughs> that's one thing and you've then, wasted it it's just <laughs> the point of this unprotected anyway and then the second thing is when they don't let them suck it afterwards oh i'm okay. turned off when they don't do ass to mouth interesting well well we, we already knew that we were very different people <laughs> <laughs> who knew that this would be the, divide, the dividing line like, <laughs> um, an ass divided cannot stand against itself for, <laughs> a, a cheek, but cheeks divided cannot ask to them I don't know. Um, also of course if there are wounds or open sores on the genitals or around the anus that's bad news don't do that make sure that you don't have open sores on the mouth or bleeding gums um, that increases risk which is why you shouldn't brush your teeth. Don't brush your teeth. Wear floss or undergo dental work. <laughs> <laughs> See our episode called Oral. Yep. Uh, or eat crunchy foods like potato chips relatively soon before or after performing analingus because that increases the risk of transmission. 
all of those, it, they cause small scratches on the insides of your lips and cheek and palate. And even though they're microscopic, they increase the chance of, of contracting sexually transmitted infections. Yeah, ass is enough of a snack. You don't need to eat anything else that day. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Just like, it's, it's, it's risky. And like a lot of things that are fun, know what those risks are and make good choices. Yeah. Um, or not, you know, do what you want. Um, I'm going <laughs> to, uh, I'm going to give you some rimming tips. Give it to me. Um, <laughs> um yeah. okay. So, uh, this is from the article 21 rimming tips, tips. Everyone should know by Alexander. Chedis. Wait, are you trying to fuck with that guy that listens to us on double speed again? Oh no. I was just saying things like when the, when what, the, say it again. Cause I, what I heard was 21 rimming tips. That's, that's it. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you got it. Twenty. I just the long titles of things I need to give credit, but then I don't really. Okay. Twenty one rimming tips. Everyone should know by Alexander Chevis, aka Beastly. Okay. This is an article on the Advocate, and he's real hot. You should go oh check my out God, that article. He is oh real my hot. God. I would let him give me his twenty one rimming tips. <laughs> um. Okay. I I just narrowed down to the ones that I like the best and wanted to share. <laughs> okay. Great. Uh, no, that's that's fantastic. Why did you laugh? Um, just they're all tips, but like you've got your favorites. Yeah, like, just amuses me. Oh, okay. Like are they are they, like did you pick them up because of the things that people haven't done to you or that you haven't done to people, and so they're novel and therefore you're interested, or are these things that like you've experienced and you're like, yeah, that's fucking good. Mm, it's a mixed bag. <laughs> There's a lot of things going on here. It's just uh, just, not, it's just you know, there's some gems and some some gems and jobs that i picked um oh god okay go. uh first they make rimming lube yeah they it's, make it's, it's you're called... not as surprised as i want let me back up they make rimming lube yeah that mm. should we do it one more time mike <laughs> they make rimming lube well okay so so okay wait <laughs> what no, thank you thank you that's all i wanted that's all i wanted okay so fine I, you're so knowledgeable whatever no 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 but like we'll when we get to the segment where i like <laughs> tell people show people all my shit um yeah yeah um I, i've used uh, flavored lube before for yeah. the purpose of eating ass or having my ass eaten and like so it wouldn't surprise me that they would market something specifically for that because like i've i've used that wow okay i had no idea okay it just wasn't marketed that way it wasn't labeled rimming uh, lube it was like it's just flavored lube and like use it got it okay we can't talk too much about this because this is dan's topic for patreon Uh, who else makes rimming lube me oh at home (laughs) recipe tips this is like better homes and gardens what's the (laughs) What's the alcohol people make in their bathtubs? Moonshine? Moonshine. This is like Dan's <laughs> version of moonshine. <laughs> There's some in your refrigerator right now. Wow. Oh, that's what you said you had to put in. The- oh, my yeah. God. Okay. Uh, so we'll have to stop talking about that. But I just. Okay. Apparently everyone else knows that. And I'm just. <laughs> um, not everyone wants a cleaned butt before rimming. Yeah. So, okay. <clears throat> I'm going to have a real hard time with this. Okay. Well, just. So this should be something that should be discussed you don't want any butt surprises uh so some people i mean i don't know the numbers but a lot of people will want like totally clean uh some people want it natural as in like if they're sweat or your normal butt aroma (laughs) um by chanel um (laughs) um then some people like that. Other people, you mentioned <laughs> Chanel number two. <laughs> Bump, set, spike. Wow. Oh my god! Well, that looks gonna do it for us. Um, oh, I love that. Okay, or, or some people even like. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I don't think Nicole Kidman. I don't think they're going to be able to lock her down for that ad spot. I yeah. think we may have to go a little bit deeper into the bench. To, um, <laughs> some people even like it specifically dirty. I so scat. I that's poop. I can't. I can't. I don't. I can't. I just. I. Okay. I. This is definitely in that space of. I don't want to yuck anybody's yum. 
if <laughs> if if that's what you're into, whatever happens between consenting adults, fantastic. I will fight for your right to continue to do that. And sweet Jesus, I don't get it. Yeah. And so can you, and, go ahead. And we don't have to get it. And and yeah, doesn't hurt anyone. But you're, so yeah, sounds absolutely. like a great episode topic for the future. Mm -hmm. So we get hear from a voice of someone that is into it yeah mm -hmm. it's not me just to be real clear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no I, I i do have a an immediate uh negative reaction but i'm the same way in that i need to like check my feeling of like that's the same reaction straight people have towards gay sex sure. sometimes and that inability to say i'm not into this but I, but do what you want to do, and I support you. Like that's what. So yeah, that's what you should do, straight people. Yeah, listen up. <laughs> um, are you still there, straight people? <laughs> did you did you stop? Okay. Um, don't just lick the hole. I agree. Um, and don't just use the tip of your tongue. Oh, you're giving tips. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, no, you can, no, you can jump in when. Um, yeah. So there's like the classic thing is like write the alphabet with your tongue but the idea is like go around like n don't just be like you, my tongue is a penis that's going to go in and back in and out in and out in and out so yeah do different things um uh you can always explore down to the taint which is very sensitive mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and what the what what beastly said in this article is when in doubt take my boyfriend's advice just make out with it like it's a mouth Wow. Which I like that advice. I like that way of thinking about it. It kind of like takes all the other things and it's like, you know how to make out and you know you do different shit. You know, you don't just like sit there and go long, 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 long. Yeah. Well, and in a weird way, your O-ring is kind of like lips. I get that. Your O-ring? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Is that your Cheerio? Like, <laughs> I've never heard anyone call it that. Oh. It's, I mean. Do yeah. people? It's a car. It, um, God, what is that from? Hold on. I think it's Austin Powers, maybe. Huh. Uh, another tip, use your stubble if you have it. Um, not everyone likes that, but some people do. Mm -hmm. So um, you can also use your breath. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Somebody on Discord was talking about that. Oh, really? That they like to, that they like to, I think it was, I shouldn't say their name. Um, that they, they like to... Uh, you, you leave some saliva so that it's wet, and then mm -hmm. and then back up and blow to create like that cooling sensation, yeah. and then and then go back in. Yeah. Um. So that's you know, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Um. And an advanced uh, area, which in general, if you're a noob, you're even moderately experienced. Don't use your teeth. Mm. Um. But the advanced technique. I, so this guy spell the, butt. <laughs> um. The this guy in the article like didn't he was just like. If you know what you're doing, you can use your teeth, but otherwise don't do it. So I had to like go, he didn't even like say what to do. So I like, was, that just made me more curious of like, so the only thing I could find is slowly and gently drag your teeth over his anus, um, but never bite or nibble or anything. So <laughs> Mike is making the face of how you would imagine doing that. I just don't even I know how I would know. get my teeth on there. Like you have got to get in real deep <laughs> like but then that's not like scraping across that's that's like like a flamingo's that's more of a head nibble. in the dirt it's like, like you got to just get in there okay i'm very confused by this i i'm not an advanced bud eater so i don't know <laughs> this is just what the internet told me in it um so that's it okay for mine so i would like to talk about the surprisingly controversial phrase tossing salad oh okay First of all, there is quite the contention online about whether tossing salad is okay to use for straight people. Hmm. Now, the etymology of the term actually comes from prison. Great. As near as we can tell, it comes from prison where the prison bitches, the newbies, would have to put jelly or salad dressing on the butthole of somebody higher up in the prison and eat their ass as part of like, like an initiation yeah huh and that that is a sort of a humiliation or form of punishment mm -hmm. but also very pleasurable for the person that <laughs> was receiving it so don't fuck it up but anyway that got became called like tossing salad hmm. at some point the gay community adopted that as their phrase um but the argument has been made that you can't toss a woman's salad Hmm. 
How do you feel about that? I just feel like it's to the point where it's synonymous. Like I don't, I don't think of there as being a difference. And I think we've used it enough to just mean ass eating that like, yeah, it means everything. Yeah. The prescriptivist versus descriptivist yep. linguistics, right? Yep, yep. So there's also the contention that in order for it to be tossing salad, there has to be a substance involved. Oh, <laughs> flavored lube, jelly, yogurt, hair, salad dressing. Well, so it, it, and another thing it's possible unproven, but possible that the hair is the salad, hmm. and that's why you and have to add something to it and toss it, like oh, you do with oh, an actual salad. Oh, and does that make my butt a bowl? Yeah. Okay. Or your butthole. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. My butthole is the vessel. It's a butt fay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so, so there's there's this two things right like there has to be something else involved it's not just eating ass but it's eating ass with a condiment hmm. <laughs> and then and then like whether it's appropriate for straight couples to use that phrase to describe what they're doing i'm just picturing someone that's like would you like ketchup or mustard <laughs> like what i yeah i i think it's gone beyond if it even if it started out as meaning you need a ranch dressing on well, and then so I I sort of wonder Hidden Valley. That's the Hidden Valley they've been talking about all this time. Apparently, <laughs> Hidden Valley Ranch. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, it entered the straight lexicon in a mid '90s HBO special <laughs> documentary about prison life. Uh, in this particular episode, an inmate said that those who like to lick another's anus is tossing the salad. <laughs> and after that show, it sort of entered the mainstream and and um the, the argument can be made that that that's when it started morphing into its modern equivalent which is just eating ass regardless of what's going on yeah. and i i think i agree with you i have a hard time sometimes like you know you know me i like words to have meaning and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. that like it it matters but i also understand that language changes and anyway yeah, yeah. anyway I, w I wanted to read. Oh, if I could find it. God, I loved it so much. So this is in the straight dope, which I've talked about before. It's one of my favorite things of all time ever, where they just talk about, they debunk things or explain things, and, and nothing is off limits. And it's been around since the 70s. Cecil Adams writes it. Uh, straight dope is homophobic. Great. <laughs> yep. Uh, <laughs> but this is in the forum under their article, Why Do They Call It Tossing Salad? How the hell did they come up with tossing one salad? Where did the term come from, and what relationship does it have with licking one's asshole? Next person. When tossing the salad, remember to stay away from the croutons. They don't taste so good. And the feta cheese, too. Next person. Apparently, because of the use of foodstuffs, such as peanut butter, syrup, and or jelly during the act. Next person. People put peanut butter, syrup, and or jelly in their salads? Next person. <laughs> I would if my salad tasted like ass. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Why don't we talk about our own experience? Yeah, why don't we talk about our own experiences? You sounded like you had some real specific uncomfortable thoughts about your experiences. Well, so that was something that only my husband and I ever did. Mm. And uh, you don't do that with it with like hookups. Or? Oh, I do now. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. But, but like uh, I never had so I was I'm sure it's because I was closeted homosexual my wife wanted to put things in my butt mm -hmm. and I never ever let her do that mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. she was even like let's take a warm bath together and then like I can explore it there because it'll be safe and clean because we're in the bath and I was like absolutely not mm -hmm. I was really militantly anti and I'm sure that it was internalized because homophobia butts are gay yeah butts are gay um and then when when trevor and i got together it was like uh it was like special occasion sex <laughs> like like that's it wasn't very often and then at first i was like I, I didn't want to receive it because i was like nervous about it am i clean enough is it like what's that like i can't smell my own butthole i hope like <laughs> I hope. <laughs> um i hope things are okay like yeah uh so it was hard for me to get comfortable that way and then uh but similarly i was afraid of going down there with him yeah so we actually used um yogurt 
like yo play like <laughs> like huh. it was lime or orange i think the first time and i was like yeah this is great he was having a grand old time i was giving uh i and uh, i was eating his ass why is that so hard to say <laughs> and um i was like yeah okay this is great this is working and then I don't think you ate yogurt out of his ass. Yeah. <laughs> That's just I'm trying to think your butt is a bowl. <laughs> yes, okay. <laughs> you can put chips and dip in there. Like whatever, whatever you need to do. Super Bowl, <laughs> put out a pretzels. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Um but then I don't think I ever let him eat my ass. I don't think that ever happened. I mm. could be wrong. <laughs> he had to eat yogurt the old fashioned way. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, and I think only a couple of people that aren't him have I ever done that to. But I have fairly recently started to get into having that done to me. Mm. And so this weekend, sweet Jesus... It's fucking amazing. I know. I'm not. I'm not mad. Yeah, I know. You're, you're, <laughs> you. I told the Discord server that I had like amazing sex, like some of the best sex of my whole life this last weekend, and Kyle got butt hurt. Because, oh. <laughs> um, because I didn't know. Discord shouldn't know before me. Are you sure? Yes. But nope. <laughs> but yes. Something, nope. Uh, I no. But my phone. No, nope. 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 You. If you have access to your phone, you have access to text me. <laughs> All right. It's fine. It's fine. Tell whoever you want, even if you don't like me anymore. <laughs> no, go on with your story. Fine. Fine. <laughs> anyway, first of the cleanliness thing, right? Like I was really nervous because when he was like, hey, come over. Did you did you talk ass before? Was this no. part of the Okay. No. You didn't have an ass plan. So this is not the this is not the episode to have this conversation, and I've been working really hard at figuring out what my deal is when it comes to sex mm -hmm, and why mm -hmm. I don't enjoy it usually. Mm -hmm. I've really like my therapist is involved. Like the, we 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 need to talk about this at some point. That's not now. Mm -hmm. And uh, part of my thing is it can't be animalistic. I can't just show up and fuck. Like we need to hang out, make out a little bit, get to know each other. Like if it's just like knock 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 open the door take your clothes off and fuck that that's not going to work for me and i need to get right with that but well, <laughs> it's that's that just it's just not how i'm wired and i'm i'm good with that actually and the reason i'm good with that is because now twice i've had experiences that weren't that and it's been wonderful yeah and i even uh, though that's not me i want the like knock 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 fuck 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 bye um but I'm really glad that you like have figured that out about your like what you want, and then you can just like then that's easier to be like, yo, this is the only way this is gonna happen. So, so I had taken a shower at about three o'clock in the afternoon. Ooh, we're getting the timeline, <laughs> and and I was just hanging out here. I I had plans this weekend, and then they fell through because my Jeep broke. So I was just like stuck here, wondering what the fuck to do with my life. So I hopped on the apps. Which is bad for me. I, I don't know why. I always end up feeling bad about myself instead of actually enjoying it. But this time was different. And it stands out because it's different. So it was about 4 o'clock, 4.30. So it had been a little while, but not very long at all. He's like, come over and play video games. In that way, that was like Netflix and chill. Like mm -hmm. I knew that it was going to be more than that. Or hoped maybe that it was yeah. going to be more than that. But the expectation was, let's start with hanging out yeah right like i could guarantee that there would be at the very least a conversation when i arrived and um so then like and then we we hooked up and it was magical and wonderful and i can go into the reasons at some point but one one of the things that happened was uh that he said he wanted to eat my ass and this boy's good at communicating. I also need that. I'm mm. basically a chick. Uh, like he, like every move he checked in with me, like this is what I want to do. Is that okay? And it was fucking fantastic. It's exactly what I need. Part of my whole, like when the wheels fall off the bus, it's because I don't know what's going to happen and I get, I freak the fuck out. Huh. That actually, yeah. like when the way, when you said it like that, that fits in with me of like your, who you are as a person, like outside of sex. Like you, that's, yeah. You just like to know what's happening and have like, yeah, I'm good with whatever. Just tell me what the, whatever is going to be. Mm. Right. Um, 
man, we're so different. I know you're <laughs> supposed to like, I know it's the right thing to like communicate and consent and all that good stuff. But like when someone is like, let's stop and have a conversation about what do we expect out of this? What do you, and I'm like, I'm expecting now to go home because I'm <laughs> so unerect right now. Yeah. 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 We're very different people. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he's like, yeah, I want to eat your ass. And so then there was a little momentary panic there of like, gosh, mm-hmm. I took a shower two hours ago. I walked here, mm-hmm. got maybe a little sweaty. Yeah. And I didn't necessarily like clean like with the idea that I was going to have my ass eaten. Yeah. 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 And I took a chance and I was like, but I'm also not like dirty. Like I'm, I'm clean. I haven't, mm-hmm. I haven't pooped since I took a shower. Like <laughs> I, 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 figured that it would likely be okay so i like leaned in it was amazing wait literally did you did you lean your ass into the face? <laughs> yeah actually yeah, yeah. yeah that's part of it um and he was really good at it mm. and i don't think so a couple of things that he did that i never really that i'd never um experienced at least not this way before was like using not the tip of his tongue but the flat of his tongue mm. like the whole tongue mm-hmm. and then and then like lick it like an ice cream cone yeah <laughs> yes yes and then also like like uh also like kind of going in there a little bit oh, like the, yeah, yeah. the the tongue as a dick thing that yeah. you were talking oh, yeah, about yeah. Or earlier but like really gently and as like he did a whole bunch of different things and like that was that was one of them that was new and different i was just i'm a new man this week i guess <laughs> kyle i don't know what's going on with me but like it was it was it was fantastic. It was I'm, fantastic. I'm happy except for the part where you um, didn't do the right things that I wanted you to afterwards, but I'm in general happy <laughs> for you. So, and then when we, we fucked the first time and then we watched Archer, the episode where they have a Bob's Burgers crossover. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then we played video games for a while and then we fucked again and cool. then the thunderstorm started and then I came, like, Part of the thing for me that I know you just said isn't isn't how you roll was it wasn't just like okay fuck we're done get out yeah yeah like we hung Man, out and that's so much time that you have to commit to it then too <laughs> like it just was lovely from tactically it's like you got to budget so much more time to and like the percentage of fucking time anyway no I'm that's good for you that's awesome I think it's important that our listeners know that we did not pick we picked the episode topic prior to Mike's Mm -hmm. sexual um, awakening this weekend. Although Dan and I did strongly suggest he go out and get rimmed so that we could talk about it. And I feel like it just... Although I was in San Francisco when you said that and it was like, go to this random weird place and get your ass eaten, which is like... Okay, Dan, that's uh, Dan. I don't don't know the ass eating (laughs) bars or whatever. Atlas something? I don't know. What? Atlas. It's like a private club for like, ass eating you can they have a bar you can have drinks but also like lots of sex yeah i wouldn't i wasn't suggesting that as dan um but <laughs> i was suggesting you find someone and be like i have to i have a study <laughs> that i need to do this is for science this is really important <laughs> i'm going to talk about your ass uh i talked a whole bunch just now yeah do you want to say things yeah no yeah okay um i <laughs> I feel like it's the like, it's it, it's not my favorite. I like and giving often, or receiving or both. Yeah, both. Okay. Um, and I feel like when I receive, I do have to kind of like do a little bit of faking, like to kind of be like, oh yeah, like because they're into it, and like I I want them to like get the like no one wants just to like fuck a dead fish like you want you want right. like you know so i'm fine I've, the wet blanket bottom wow i've never heard that no oh that's also from the brave little toaster <laughs> 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 um yeah but like so i i feel like i i try to like like sound like i'm more into it than i am it feels fine like i, I you can you can do that if you want to um i don't i don't oft uh give but Every now and then, I'll just, you know, want want to treat, want to treat myself. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's. I feel like it's just like not often a thing in my repertoire. Do you remember the first time that you did either give or receive? Like, no. did that did that doesn't stand out to you as a thing that was like, no, oh, this is momentous. No. No. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Great. Is it just because you have a terrible memory? Yeah, but yeah, and I don't. Yeah, <laughs> I probably wouldn't. Don't remember any other first aside from like first time fucking someone in the ass and first time being fucked in the ass. Those are the big like momentous things. But yeah, other than that, I don't know. Uh, how about condiments? Have you used no? Condiments? I've never done any. That that is all new to me. I've never put anything in there, including flavored lubes or like any of that. Hmm. Uh, no. So it might be something on my sexual bucket list. Yeah. I recommend it. Okay. Mm, yeah. <laughs> you did. That was not a ringing endorsement. The thing, the thing I recommend about it is any like residual anxiety that I have that either of us, whoever is giving and receiving, that either of us are going to have like issues with cleanliness <laughs> and that it's going to taste bad or smell bad. Whatever you use. That's going to be the predominant It's going to mask it. Yeah. It, and that lets me let go of some of my anxiety it's about like it. the Febreze of <laughs> ass play. <laughs> it might still be there, but you're going to cover up that smell real good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I, mostly I would advocate for using it if there's any, any like anxiety about yeah. it. Like, like clean up as best you can. And then if you still have, if you're still worried about it use something that's going to overpower whatever you might worry is there. Yeah. Um, uh, another part of it is I have a lot of hair in my ass and some people like that and some people don't. So like that's a, and I, shaving is too, I can't do that. I can't keep that up. I can't, it's just not, it's very difficult to navigate. The dance of the world are applauding. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just, it's too much or, and too, it's hard to do on your own. And have you, have you waxed your butthole before? No, because I've gotten other things waxed. Like I've gotten like my back wax and my skin is so sensitive that it causes me to like, I just have like, I bleed. I've like my back is just all bumps wow. and um and so it, it just so yeah no i've never gotten to an even more sensitive area to yeah. get waxed because i was like no that's not gonna work for me yeah yeah i haven't either i know that there are places that for men they will do what they call the sack and crack yes yes and back sack and crack that's yeah. the <laughs> <laughs> but some people uh, I've t- said in the past i have a lot of shame around my ha- body hair and it's like very uncomfortable to me so uh, you know, that's how do you feel about body hair on other people? Fine. I don't. I don't think I. I used to. <laughs> that didn't make for good fodder. Did it? Once more, but convincing. <laughs> <laughs> like I, in the past, I have preferred no or limited body hair. But I think as I've like the same reason that I've like been okay, like gotten into beards and like uh, more and more, like more into and okay with not just okay with like, or fine with, and don't have a preference around body hair. I was hanging out with a straight guy this weekend at accidentally at the bar. I just accidentally I, hung out with a straight guy. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, after, after I, I had my hookup, I was hungry. So I went to my local bar here and, and had some food and ran into somebody that I know there and he's straight, but uh, through our conversation, man, Hey guys, if you can get yourself comfortable and just like hang out with a straight guy you barely know, but also be comfortable, like if he's clearly an ally and you can mm-hmm. like talk about shit, it's really rewarding. <laughs> anyway, at one point he said, "Yeah, I'm 132nd Cherokee, so I'm basically a seal from the neck down." Because <laughs> <they, 'cause laughs> like that's a stereotype. Native Americans like yeah. not a lot of not a lot of body hair going on. Yeah, or Asians for that matter. Yeah, I wish I had that, but I don't. It's interesting. There's so many there's so many guys out there that are super into it. Yeah. And it's interesting to me that you wouldn't let that in. Like I understand you're you're attuned however you're attuned, right? Like you have your you have your your things and even a rational argument against them doesn't make them go away. Yeah. Yeah. And like there are a lot of people like the thing that you have the most anxiety about would be like the most attractive thing about you to some guys. And it's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. And I, it, something else I don't like being for hookups, mostly bottom is that I don't like that. I'm so tall and everyone assumes I'm a top, but again, like I've heard a lot of people being like, that's like, I'm into that, like tall bottoms. Like, hmm. um, so mm-hmm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I have a thing for bottoms with a big old dick. Like, Oh yeah. Grab onto it. Use it like a what's, handle. What's that called? The rusty trombone. Um, <laughs> 
while you're eating their ass, you're jerking them off yeah. through yeah. under their legs. So it looks like you're playing a trombone. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. So in summary, to eat, sum up, eat ass, pray ass, love ass. <laughs> <laughs> Should we take a break? Let's take a break. Let's take a break. Break. Stay away from my butt. Ass break. <laughs> this is the part where Mike and Kyle take a break. Wait, so, so are we back? We're back. You <laughs> genuinely seem to We're ask back. that. <laughs> Wait, are we back? <laughs> um, are we, we are, back door? Are we, <laughs> we're going to do our gay straightest. We're going to do our gay straightest, but first. But, but we're going to do it, but first. Um, uh, oh, we are up to 300 reviews on iTunes, which is awesome. Thank you so much for everyone that rated us. Don't uh, care. We ca- <laughs> you, see, you do. You need to care. Um, we are still at a 4.5, uh, which is good. That's good. That's a passing grade. So I appreciate that. But if anyone else hasn't rated and and wants to help us out. The three R's, bitches, we haven't talked about in a long time. Rate, review, and subscribe. It, yep. It really helps us. Um, okay. Our website is gayishpodcast.com. We are on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Your mom. We're on your mom, in your mom, <laughs> around your mom. Um, at Gayish Podcast for slash Gayish Podcast. Our hotline. You can send us text messages or leave us voicemails is 5855-GAYISH. That's 585-542-9474. Standard rates apply. Ooh, I almost fucked that up. You walked up to a cliff and almost fell and then got... Okay. Well, I just I had this image of like somebody leaving us a voicemail and then like rimming the receiver with their <laughs> tongue, like. Um, and our email is gayishpodcast at gmail dot com. Um, also, I don't know why I'm the one remembering this. Just a reminder that we put out a request for Mike and Kyle slash fiction. So, um, if you haven't heard of that, like I hadn't, that means fictional stories where they hook up. The contest ends September 30th, so send it to gayishpodcast at gmail.com. Do they get anything if they win? There's going to be a surprise. Oh, a surprise for... (laughs) 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 Okay, I'm going to out you, Mike. You said that and then did not speak and just like shrugged and like I actually have no idea what... But you said it so convincingly. I thought you had it planned out. Sorry to call you out. We don't actually know what we're doing most times. And this is one of those. If we're outing people, the mm-hmm. listeners need to know. <laughs> we're out drinking a beer my... earlier. Oh. That's true. Who are you and what have you done with Kyle? You drank a I... PBR. You requested a PBR. It's a good... There's wine in the fridge. There's oh, there's pink is? wine in the fridge. There's, it's not pink. It's white. Oh, I thought it was pink. It, that's a good way to help ensure I only drink one drink because I'm not going to want another one. Like, mm. it's, it's a good... Uh, anyway, but yeah. You're rimming yourself. <laughs> I'm rimming myself. <laughs> I'm rimming myself. Um, okay, gays and straightest. Let's do our gays and straightest. I'll go first. Great. Um, so, I've been thinking a lot about, um, ever since uh, Jake Leon Guerrero said it on our People of Color episode, mm-hmm. Um Oftentimes, the gay stereotype is something more feminine. The straight stereotype is more masculine. And that's just part of... That's inherent to the stereotype. So that happens a lot. This is one. I'm And, and I like also showing the variance of that. Um, so this is uh, like one of those. The My gayest thing is uh, going archery shooting. Shooting archery bows. Shooting bow and arrows. Bow, throwing arrows with an archery. Bowing. Bowing. I don't know. <laughs> um... I you crashed a plane. Oh, got it. <laughs> Cuz I didn't tell the pilots about the new nubbin or whatever. <laughs> um uh yeah, so I went there on a date. I wore my Britney Spears shirt and so it was like a very like I felt very homosexual there while I was like shooting Your nails were painted. Ears. My nails were painted kind of shittily, but it, it was like it was just felt like a like I am a gay dude who can do some some shooting of things and that's cool um and it was a lot of fun um my straightest thing mm-hmm. is uh me and our favorite fag stag doug and koviak yeah uh, we after work one day went to this cute little dessert shop and got some like i got this like nutella of course chocolate thing 
um little like in the shape of a heart and it was like this amazingly designed place it was like so adorable and we sat down and like but it was uh my serious moment because like you know hanging out with my straight bro eating some dessert together great yeah what about you what about me The strangest thing about me this week, I was down in San Francisco for work most of last week, and uh, we did this team event at an indoor go-kart racing thing, and you put me behind the wheel of a go-kart, I was fucking maniac. I was like, I'm going to crash into all you fuckers, fuck you, look at my dick. Like I was a straight bro out for blood. I can see that. Yeah, it was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Did you win? Uh, No. I got second the first race, and then... um, Okay, I did not say this to anybody on my team, but it was all the fat guys that won, and I think it's because they're heavier and the, made the go-kart slip less as it was going around the curves. Oh, that it made the tires more grippy. Like I, I the the top 5 people were all big dudes and they won in order of their weight. Hmm. Like at least visibly. Wow. Um Interesting. Anyway, anyway, yeah. Uh then the, the gayest thing about me this week at this team event, so I've, I've garnered a reputation for myself as somebody who always speaks for diversity mm-hmm. and good for you. I like vocally call people out. If it's a small group, I'll call people out. This was like all of the engineers in my organization. So it's like 60 engineers. They're talking about database replication schemes and they're talking about the master slave arrangement that they have mm. for the way that they are currently doing it and they were just they they said master slave over and over and over again and i stood up and i queened out on them. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was like stop saying slave that hasn't been a technical term for the last 40 years there are many other words in the english language that actually describe what's happening more effectively than that word don't use that word thanks and then and then I moved on to my next thing but like also also not a single black person in the room hmm. like my gay ass was was the diversity in that room if you didn't <laughs> count the people from india and pakistan like yeah. uh, any anyway anyway well, I how just, was that received uh i had multiple so a couple of people clapped when i said it and then oh. like i had i had four or five people afterwards come privately and say thanks for saying something and keeping us honest oh. so Nice. I only had one person that was like, but it's a technical term. So then I got to reiterate, it was a technical term 40 years ago. Mm-hmm. Like w- the industry has moved on. Maybe you should too. <laughs> Good job. Thanks. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. Uh, so we were on the Plant Daddy podcast, a local Seattle podcast about plants. Yeah. And the gay dudes that grow them. Yep. Uh, I don't know if you're allowed to say grow. I don't know if they're like very plant sensitive that the gay dudes that are friends with them and cohabitating with them. The plants that they planted. The plants that they planted or purchased that were adopted. But listen to episode 12 where we're on and we mostly just got high. Again. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and I talked about how I suck at plants. <laughs> so um, yeah, check it out. That's it. A special thank you to... <laughs> <laughs> um, Mr. Palin for finally getting to live his truth. I, t- t- being that single. Might, that might mean just not being with that bitch no more. That's true. All right. The, but the way you said it. <laughs> um, and thank you to Beastly for giving very important uh, tips for all of us and giving me some great sexual fantasies about you. And thank you to that boy who made me see God with his tongue this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks to all of your asses. Yes. <laughs> they they do important work. That's it. This has been Gayish. I'm Mike Johnson. I'm Kyle Getz. Until next week, be butch, be fabulous, be you. See your ass next week. Remember to listen. <laughs> <laughs> listen to the whole episode. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love it.